It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brain of Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege of interviewing the Carolina Hurricanes Canes crew, Peyton Odom. How are you doing today? I'm good, Brandon. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in working in professional sports? Yeah, so <clears throat> I really had to think about this question because I think there's a difference between wanting to work in professional sports and, and knowing it's possible, right? So to be honest with you, when I first started, um, I went to college, I um, was playing soccer and after my soccer career ended due to an injury, I, I thought that was pretty much a wrap on my time in sports. And so I, I pursued something different. I actually went into nursing. Um, my mom's a nurse actually. So I figured, you know, that kind of made sense for me. And um I would say God just had a different plan. I was never happy. I spent some time down in Wilmington at UNCW. And um, I think through mentorship and leaders in my life, they reminded me like, hey, Peyton, like you love sports. What are you doing? Um, So I did get the chance to move back to Raleigh. Um, NC State said yes. So I said yes. Um, Came here to Raleigh and immediately got plugged into the sport management program. Once again, I really didn't even know this was a thing (laughs) until getting here to Raleigh. Um, So I've been here for about a year and a half at States studying sport management, and it really has changed my complete perspective on on life, really. Um, Being able to have those mentors who have already worked in the sport industry for, you know, many years and um, then getting plugged in with Carolina was a pretty quick turnaround as well. So I would say um, I've kind of known my entire life that I wanted to work in professional sports to answer your question. It's just been recently that I knew it was possible. And like I said, I, I think all of like, the mentors in my life kind of planting that seed and reminding me, like, Peyton, this is what you love doing. It's possible for you. So, Of course, what was that experience like for you going to NC State and studying sports management? Yeah, um, I would say I, I've always liked college as soon as I I actually went to a community college. And, you know, as soon as I started those classes, you know, school has always been a thing that I've enjoyed. Um, but when I went to UNCW, like I said, spent some time in Wilmington, I just wasn't happy. So I actually um, ended up coming back home and taking a gap year. And in that gap year, I think I questioned, you know, is college really for me? Like maybe... I have a different path in life and, you know, that's not something I'm going to pursue. But um, as soon as I applied to NC State and got accepted there and actually made my way to campus, you know, the year and a half that I've been here at State has been amazing, absolutely amazing. So not only sport management, but being here in the Raleigh area, you know, you're in a, a pretty sport city. You have the Hurricanes, you have the Durham Bulls, you have professional soccer teams. Being exposed to all of that, as well as what NC State has to offer, has really been incredible. So I'm just blessed to be here. What was that process like for you coming to the Carolina Hurricanes and becoming a Canes crew member? Yeah, um, so I I knew that I wanted to work for Carolina for quite some time. Um, So honestly, I just checked job openings for like a year. 
I'm constantly just updating their website and seeing, you know, is there anything out there? And eventually I checked one day and, you know, it said Kane Screw. I had no idea what Kane Screw was. <clears throat> so clicked on it, you know, looked at the description. It kind of aligned with what I want to do. Um, so I figured I'd give it a shot. And I remember the day that I, I went to auditions and there were like 150 people in there in, in PNC Arena. And I was like, well, <laughs> you know, if I make it through, this is 100% God. Um, so went through the rounds of interviews. There were three rounds. And eventually, I believe they selected 10. And, you know, I'm happy to be one of those 10. Um, and Kane's crew has just been really fun. I mean, I think that's the best word I could describe what our job is, is it's just having a lot of fun, engaging with fans, engaging with our team, and just making the overall fan experience something that you know that they're going to want to come back. Um, you know, clearly being at the game, just being at the game for a lot of people is enough, but if we can make that better in any way possible, that's our job. Of course, for my listeners that don't know, what is Kane's Crew and what are some of your roles and responsibilities? Yeah, so Kane's Crew is, to be honest with you, it's kind of like a hype squad. I think that's the best um, wording that I would give you. Um, we really focus on fan engagement as well as um, like in-game promotions, anything that can enhance the fan experience. Um, so it can be something as small as rolling t-shirts and doing t-shirt tosses to something more on a larger scale doing a um like an in-game promotion that would definitely be something bigger that takes you know more than one person um and then also you know being a brand ambassador for the Carolina Hurricanes and engaging with our community you know it goes outside of PNC arena and your typical game day um I know at the beginning of the season we did a 5k we do many events for our season ticket members so it's it's really a lot of jobs within one job which I think is super exciting because I've always been the kind of guy that I never want to show up to work and do the same thing every single day and Kane's crew is something different every single day so um that is, it's just been a really um great opportunity for me and a great way to connect to Raleigh what has that experience been like being a brand ambassador for the Carolina Hurricanes? Yeah, I mean, you got to realize that you're representing Raleigh's pride, right? Like, Raleigh is really a hockey city. And, you know, we have people who have not missed a game since we moved here to Raleigh, since the team actually relocated here to Raleigh. And um, I think that the culture that has been created goes you know, far beyond me. And I think that, you know, I, I really didn't realize that until actually working with the organization, how big of a thing, you know, hockey was in the city. So to be able to represent this team, it really means everything. And it means a lot to a, a lot of people. What is it like getting to represent a NHL team like the Carolina Hurricanes? Yeah. Um, you know, working in the National Hockey League and representing this team, you got to realize that, you know, Carolina is, you know, one of your, your better teams in the league. So the expectation and the bar that we set, the standard is just significantly higher. Um, from day one, you know, it, it, the message has been, you know, the pursuit of excellence. And um, we have a motto of, you know, win the day. And basically what that means is, you know, every single day we're not going to have our best day, right? Like there's going to be times we go in there and we're going to lose – we're going to lose bad. Um, things aren't going to go as planned. But, you know, having a motto of win the day is, you know, we go in with the expectation that we are going to win. And we, um, you know, everything that we can do, everything that's controllable, um, we definitely do our absolute best. So um, just I, I love being a part of a team that, you know, is setting the example for not only, you know, Raleigh, but, the league as a whole. What does a typical game day look like for you as a Carolina Hurricanes Canes crew member? Yeah, so a typical day, um, it really just depends on what time puck drop is, but, you know, let's just say puck drop is at 7.30. 
Um, I would probably get there around 4.30. So you're getting there a few hours early. And um, my typical game days, I do have class. So I would say the mornings are spent on campus at state, whether that be, you know, getting some work done or um, just studying. Um, and then arriving to the stadium around 4.30. And when I get there, there's already fans lined up, which is really, really exciting, um, especially for your bigger games. Um, there may be a, a line, you know, a super long line that people are tailgating, and, and that's really cool to see. Um, walking in, getting checked in, and I would say the first thing that is kind of on our bucket list is to come together as a team and have a meeting, basically laying out what the night's going to look like, right? Um, from there, we do a lot of little tasks that make a big picture of what the night's going to look like. So that could be rolling t-shirts, that could be um, setting up the bombs with our signs, that could be going up into the top of the arena and setting up our parachutes. Um, just a bunch of little tasks um, that get us ready for the game, right? Um, from there, having our, our meeting, coming together, planning out what the night's going to look like. And then um, once the doors open, that's kind of our chance to go up and interact with the fans. <clears throat> so we come from downstairs, um, go up, you know, greet people in welcome them in, walk around, um, usually hand out something, whether that be like an autograph card or a sticker or a koozie or something like that. Um, and that's one of our honestly best opportunities to connect with people. From there, we have butt chop. That's kind of when we're um, waving our flags, getting the fans hyped up. And um, from there, you know, our night can take a lot of different avenues, you know, depending on what we have planned for that night. So um, our intermission games change from night to night. Um, so it really depends on the particular game day. Um, and then the kind of night that we have, I mean, you know, when we win, it's, it's super fun. And when we lose, it's, it's still fun. It's still fun, right? Um, but I would say it really just depends on the game and, and what we have planned out for that night. Of course, for you, what is that feeling like, obviously getting to wave that flag during – the actual game. Yeah, so we, we wave flags at the beginning of the game that would be like player intros. Um, and that <laughs> really is a surreal feeling just because, I mean, you're in the midst of 18,000 people um, screaming. And so, I mean, just that moment, getting ready for the game is one of my favorite moments um, on, the, on the game day. Um, and then, you know, we wave flags after every goal. So, obviously, everybody's super excited. You have fans cheering, high-fiving, and we're right down there in the midst of it. So, um, if you're waving your flag, something good's happening, right? What have been some of your favorite memories and moments as the Carolina Hurricanes Canes group? Yeah. Um, so, as any sports fan knows, like, you know, you're, you're going to have games that you'll never forget. You know, you'll, you'll never forget where you were. You'll never forget the score, uh, what it kind of felt like. Um, and I think my favorite game would be we played the Pittsburgh Penguins. And um, we ended up – we were winning that game. And they ended up coming back, tied it up. I believe it was 2-2. Two to two, And um, we in the overtime. And, you know, sometimes we – struggle in overtime but um we did pull that game out and I have some friends who are some big Pittsburgh Penguins fans and just to, to be able to to win that game and I was right there down there like on the ice behind the reporters so I mean it happened like right in front of my face um and just to see you know 18 19,000 people go absolutely crazy um that was probably my a memory that I'm not going to forget it anytime soon. Of course, for you, what is it like balancing being, of course, a Carolina Hurricanes fan, but also working for the Carolina Hurricanes? Yeah, so <clears throat> I would say being a fan is, is one thing and having that passion and that, that love for the organization while also being a professional representation of this team, right? Like, that's two separate things. So... There is definitely um, 
moments where you have to realize like I, I, I work with these guys like I, I'm not a, a fan right now you know I'm a professional colleague so that really affects how you talk to people um how you act I mean if you, you know as a fan there's not really any limitations you know the ref um are you still there sorry mm-hmm. okay um if, if the ref makes a you know a bad call or something like that like um that's not something I'm going to react to because, you know, I'm a part of the team, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I mean, you're supposed to act professionally um, in just a, a much different manner than a fan would act. Right. So um, I think just keeping those two things separate while also showing your love and passion for the organization, if that makes sense. What is that feeling like for you getting to put on that jacket and representing the Carolina Hurricanes? Yeah, I mean, it means a lot um, and something that I definitely don't take for granted. Um, I, I literally, you know, I, I pull up to the stadium and like I said, we get there a few hours before anybody else. And, you know, I've, I've done other stuff during the day. You know, I'm a full-time student still at NC State. However, when I arrived at PNC Arena, I, I always take a moment to pray in my car and literally thank God for the opportunity that he's given me. Um so it does. I mean, it's very, very special and, and something that I I don't take lightly. Um, you know, every single night, I think you have to bring that same energy, that same intentionality, because I think a big thing that was told to me and resonated was every single game, you know, it may be our 100th game. You know, this is nothing new for us. We're there every single night. But it's somebody else's first game. And I think having having that idea of, you know, not getting complacent and not getting not taking it for granted, I would say, and realizing that for, for our fans, like this, there's always going to be, you know, this is our first hockey game and it's my job to make it special for them. And, and having that level of intentionality um, while also thanking God the entire way. Of course, for you, what is that experience like getting to work those theme nights like the Hartford Whalers night? Yeah, Whalers night is coming up. So <laughs> I, I've i actually never worked um, specifically. I mean, this is my first season um, with Carolina. So I've never worked a Whalers night and that's coming up. So I'm super stoked about that one. I'm, I'm really happy. Um, but we've had other um, theme nights this year. Uh, a big one that I worked was Cancer Awareness Night. And once again, I, I mean, the word intentionality just keeps coming to mind because I think that's something that we prioritize is being very intentional with each and every theme night. You know, they all mean something very special. Um, for instance, like can- Cancer Awareness Night, that affects so many people, right? Um, including myself, you know, I have loved ones who have lost to cancer. So um, I think it really creates a sense of community you know, where fans are going there and it's, it's more than hockey at that point, which is, is really special. Of course, as a Canes crew member, what are some of the fan interactions that fans can enjoy during a Carolina Hurricanes game day? Yeah, so we we do a lot to, um, obviously that's my job is fan engagement. <laughs> so we um, a lot goes into that, um, whether that be a, a photo booth whether that be seeing us walking around and, you know, just engaging in a conversation, um, maybe giving them a free autograph card or a, a QZ or something like that. Just something to put a smile on their face. Um, and then occasionally throughout the year when the weather's nice, we do have um, typically like inflatables outside, something that fans can engage in. Um, obviously the time that I've, I've got to PNC and people are roasting marshmallows outside. So, I think the organization does a really good job of being able to, beyond just being at the game, from the time you walk in the stadium, having other stuff to do. Um, And then that flows into um, really into our game of, you know, having these intermission games. They're for a reason, right? Like we don't just do them to do them. Um, Tossing t-shirts, doing the parachutes, like all of it kind of works together to create the best fan experience that we possibly can. What are some of your future plans as a Carolina Hurricanes Kings group member? Yeah, so I I definitely plan to be on staff 
as long as they'll let me. Um, so this is my first season, and every year we do have auditions. So going forward, you know, that's something that I'll hop right back into is, you know, auditioning again with hopes of being on the team, you know, next year. So I would say as long as I'm at NC State and in the Raleigh area, this is something that I want to be a part of. Um, you know, moving forward from that, you know, clearly I do have plans to, you know, I don't know if I, I want to stay in the Raleigh. I would love to stay in the Raleigh area. That would be fantastic. But, you know, the nature of the sport industry is, is just not guaranteed. Um, you know, we've had people come from other organizations to us and we've had people leave our team for other teams. And that really is just the nature of, of what it means to work in the sport industry and kind of having that up in mind that, you know, this is not a guarantee. So I would say as long as I can work for this team, I love this team. I love being a part of this team. Then you'll see my face here for, for quite some time. What advice would you give those people that are looking to work in professional sports? Um, kind of like I said in the beginning, you have to believe that you can work in professional sports, right? Like that kind of sounds crazy, but I feel like I'm a testament that, you know, anything is possible. As long as for me, something that has really helped is just having a faith in God um, and praying and, you know, being intentional of, of where I am in the moment and then being grateful for that. But um, my best piece of advice to anybody who works wants to work in professional sports is saying that out loud and saying it confidently and knowing that you can do that. Um, you know, me, me being at NC State has helped tremendously. So I would say if you're not here in the Raleigh area, if you're somewhere else, there's plenty of universities across the country that offer sport management programs or maybe sport exercise or sport administration, something like that. So there are plenty of resources out there. I think that's kind of your starting point. Um, and, and more or less, more than even the education aspect is really networking. Networking is huge. And really connecting with your professors, connecting with your colleagues, connecting with really anybody in the industry. Um, just, you know, to, to be a sponge and to, you know, humble yourself and in that moment say, hey, like, I'm 22 years old. I, I don't know as much as you, you know, you've worked in the sport industry for 20, 25 years and just being open to take like hearing, hearing advice and taking advice because there, there's plenty out there. There's plenty of um, resources on the What advice would you have those people that are looking to work in professional hockey for an NHL team like the Carolina Hurricanes? Yeah. Um, I would say once again, um, I think I kind of touched on this in the beginning is, you know, recognizing job openings. So for me, I, I checked the NC's website for a, a year. And for the whole year, you know, it was it was constantly, you know, like we're not looking for anybody. We're not looking for anybody. And that's okay. I, I think that you just have to be patient. And um, when that moment comes to not be, to have full confidence in, in doing what you're doing. So um I would say with, with hockey specifically, you do have to know the nature of the game and understanding the season is a little bit the, different than something like the NFL, right? Like we have games, you know, throughout the week, whereas like the NFL only has like games on, you know, maybe like a Sunday, Monday, or Thursday. Um, so your, se your season's longer and um, there's, there's just a lot of things that make hockey unique. But I would say having a solid understanding of, of what you're signing up for before even considering um, applying somewhere. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Carolina Hurricanes? Yeah, absolutely. I would say um, definitely my my LinkedIn, my LinkedIn and I'll, I'll give all that stuff to Brandon. Um, I also have a pretty good social media presence on Instagram. Um, my handle is P.O. 1505 and that's kind of where you're going to catch me on game days or um really just throughout my week whether that be like a day in the life or um you know reposting uh news from the Carolina hurricanes or stuff that makes me me and uh, i love engaging once again with people through social media thank you again peyton odom for your interview and best of luck in your future with the Carolina hurricanes as a canes crew member absolutely thank you brandon i appreciate you 
Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. You can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Peyton, Peyton Odom, for your interview, and best luck in your future. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.